This chapter highlights the importance of restoring livelihoods and building resilience in post-conflict environments. Specifically, this chapter discusses strategies for how to support sustainable recovery and livelihoods in post-conflict environments. Livelihoods are the resources people need to survive and the process by which they obtain and utilize those resources. Livelihood resources may include charcoal, wildlife, and fisheries. For livelihoods to support peace-building efforts, they must be resilient. They need to be able to recover from environmental stresses and adapt to potential environmental shocks. Designing resilient livelihoods is thus one aspect of the post-conflict phase that includes rebuilding economies and governance mechanisms as well as alleviating poverty. Ensuring food security, supporting the reintegration of ex-combatants, and providing peace dividends are also important reasons for establishing sustainable and resilient livelihoods. Conflict can take a heavy toll on people's livelihoods by affecting the availability of land, trees, and other resources that are needed for people's everyday well-being, economic well-being, and for their food security. During conflict, natural resources may be destroyed or overly exploited. In addition, conflict can destroy the physical infrastructure and governance mechanisms needed to support economic development and livelihood. Moreover, conflict can also result in the depletion of natural resource reserves in regions where people displaced by the conflict flee. As such, there is a need to look at the impact of conflict on livelihoods as a first step in rebuilding resilient and sustainable livelihoods. Since 60 to 80 percent of livelihoods rely on agriculture and natural resources in post-conflict countries, conflicts which impact natural resources directly affect livelihoods. As such, restoring livelihoods must deal with the impact of conflict on the environment and natural resources and devise policies to manage the resources on which people rely to sustain themselves over the long term. In building sustainable and resilient livelihoods, it's important to look first at the agricultural sector. Studies have found that on average, conflict leads to production losses of 12% and slows agricultural growth by 3% per year. Syria is a case in point where prior to the conflict in Syria, there was a vibrant agricultural economy. Wheat production is 40% lower now than pre-crisis levels. As such, conflict can have long-term impacts on the agricultural sector, which has tremendous impacts for human well-being, food security, and long-term human development. Another place where we see the impacts of conflict on livelihoods is Wajir County of Kenya. This is part of the arid lands of Kenya, which border Somalia to the east and Ethiopia to the north. This region has experienced intercommunal conflict among different clans in 2014. The main challenge for this region is the development of water, as it is a water-scarce region. Localized conflicts linked to scarcity of pasture and water, compounded by internal migration, are placing increasing pressure on watering points that 69% of households have experienced reduced access to food due to local conflict illustrates the influence on livelihoods in this part of the world. When a household is unable to provide for itself through traditional livelihood strategies, it may need to adopt a maladaptive or coping livelihood strategy. Often these strategies are considered to be inferior to traditional livelihood strategies because they can devastate the environment if many individuals within the community pursue the same coping strategy during times of difficulty. An example of a maladaptive coping strategy is the cutting down of productive trees, such as the pistachio orchards in Afghanistan that have been used for firewood. Because coping strategies are not sustainable over the long term, the key challenge then after conflict is to move from coping to rebuilding livelihood strategies that are sustainable and resilient to future stresses. Introducing a sustainable livelihoods approach is critical. A sustainable livelihood approach uses livelihoods as a lens through which to consider peace building objectives and tactics to best support both people and the environment over the long term. A number of factors will determine a household's resilience and ability to absorb the stress and shock which accompanies conflict without turning to violence. As such, in building a sustainable livelihoods approach and fostering resilience, we need to look at the type of assets available to households, which range from physical assets to social assets, financial and economic assets, as well as natural resources. And in addition, we need to look at the institutions, policies, and processes that can influence a household's assets and the resilience of the livelihoods of those who live there. 
the Afghanistan Conservation Corps has had a number of successes, including the rehabilitation of fruit and forestry nurseries, as well as the establishment of more than 800 orchards and home nurseries in different provinces throughout Afghanistan. Another way to support sustainable livelihoods can come from market-based approaches, especially from the use of a value chain approach. A value chain refers to the social and economic relationships would take a product or service from its supply source to the consumer. Using a value chain approach to peace building means a focus is placed on identifying essential value chains within a community and supporting individual livelihoods as part of a longer value chain. That is to ensure economic opportunities at the local level that are environmentally and socially sustainable. More so, it means creating mutually beneficial social and economic relationships among a wide array of actors, including individuals, private entities, government bodies, and communities. Recently, we are seeing value chain approaches being introduced into peace building efforts. Some of the basic elements promoted in a value chain approach include having a participatory process, focusing on market demand and making sure a sector has the potential to enter into a market, and having a flexible process that can be adapted to a specific conditions within a country. If we look specifically at Colombia's BioTrade program, this program is focusing on livelihoods as a means of combating longstanding conflict in the country. It is contributing to the peace process by developing local businesses so that citizens have an alternative to the production of illicit crops. As such, it has focused on the building of sustainable agricultural systems for medicinal plants, fruits, grains, and other products. It has nurtured non-timber forest products, such as fruits and flowers, fibers and honey. It has also sought to promote ecotourism. The program focuses on sustainable rural development, and as such, it has generated a number of social and environmental economic benefits that have been helpful for lifting individuals out of poverty. Moreover, it demonstrates the importance of a sustainable livelihoods approach for post-conflict peace building by giving Colombians jobs or livelihoods based in sustainable markets and developing the capacity of the government to support and protect sustainable livelihood initiatives. An example comes from Afghanistan with the creation of the Afghan Conservation Corps. In Afghanistan, 80% of the rural population directly relies on natural resources for livelihoods. The Afghanistan Conservation Corps program was funded by the U.S. government and managed by the United Nations. It works with government agencies in Afghanistan and local communities to conserve Afghanistan's biodiversity while also focusing on improving rural livelihoods and building capacity to restore and manage forests, rangelands, and watersheds sustainably. It has generated numerous benefits, especially for providing work for vulnerable local residents, including work for returning refugees, internally displaced persons, women, and ex-combatants. To conclude, this chapter has looked at the importance of restoring sustainable and resilient livelihoods with a particular focus on the agricultural sector. Sustainable livelihoods and other initiatives such as value chain approaches are vital for restoring livelihoods and building resilience in the aftermath of conflict. They provide an important tool for restoring livelihood resources that are also essential for peace building. Thank you.